Hello, today we'll be going through practice question 61 to 70 for the CompTIA Server Plus exam. Let's begin. Which of the following ensures a secondary network path is available if the primary connection fails? The correct answer is D. Fault tolerance. Fault tolerance ensures a secondary network path is available if the primary connection fails. It is designed to maintain system availability by providing redundancy and automatic failover. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Link aggregation. This combines multiple network connections for increased bandwidth and load balancing, but it does not specifically provide a secondary path in case of failure. B. Most recently used. This term is typically associated with caching or storage, not network redundancy. C. Heartbeat. This is a monitoring mechanism that detects failures in clustered systems but does not provide an alternative network path. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Fault tolerance. A developer is creating a web application that will contain five web nodes. The developer's main goal is to ensure the application is always available to the end users. Which of the following should the developer use when designing the web application? The correct answer is A. Round Robin. Round Robin is a load balancing technique that distributes incoming requests across multiple web nodes in a sequential manner. This ensures high availability by preventing any single node from being overloaded and allowing traffic to continue if one node fails. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Link aggregation. This combines multiple physical network links into one for increased bandwidth and redundancy, but does not distribute traffic between web nodes. C. Network address translation. This translates private IP addresses to public IP addresses, which is useful for routing but does not ensure high availability for web applications. D. Bridged networking. This allows a virtual machine to act as if it is on the same network as the host but does not contribute to high availability or load balancing. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Round Robin. Which of the following is the most secure method to access servers located in remote branch offices? The correct answer is A. Use an MFA out-of-band solution. Multi-factor authentication with an out-of-band solution provides the most secure method for accessing remote servers. OOB authentication requires verification through a separate channel, reducing the risk of unauthorized access even if credentials are compromised. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Use a Telnet connection. Telnet transmits data in plain text, making it highly insecure due to the risk of credential interception. Secure alternatives like SSH should be used instead. C. Use a password complexity policy. While strong passwords help improve security, they alone do not prevent attacks such as phishing or credential theft. MFA provides an additional layer of protection. D. Use a role-based access policy. Role-based access control limits user permissions but does not protect against unauthorized access if credentials are compromised. MFA is a stronger security measure. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Use a MFA out-of-band solution. A server administrator is installing a new server that uses 40 GB network connectivity. The administrator needs to find the proper cables to connect the server to the switch. Which of the following connectors should the administrator use? The correct answer is D. QSFP+. QSFP+, supports 40 GB per second network connectivity, making it the correct choice for connecting the server to the switch at this speed. Why the other options are incorrect? A. SFP+. SFP Plus supports up to 10 GB per second, which is insufficient for a 40 GB per second connection. B. GBIC. GBIC is an older transceiver standard that supports only 1 GB per second, making it unsuitable for 40 GB per second networking. C. SFP. SFP supports speeds up to 1 GB per second, which is far below the required 40 GB per second. Therefore, the correct answer is D, QSFP+. A technician is laying out a file system on a new Linux server. Which of the following tools would work best to allow the technician to increase our partition size in the future without reformatting it? 
The correct answer is A, LVM. Logical Volume Manager allows dynamic resizing of partitions without reformatting. It enables administrators to increase partition sizes by adding physical storage to volume groups and extending logical volumes as needed. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Disk Part Disk Part is a Windows command line utility for managing disks and partitions, not a Linux tool. C. FDisk FDisk is used to create and modify partition tables, but it does not support resizing partitions dynamically without reformatting. D. Format The format command is used to prepare a partition for use by creating a file system, but it does not help with resizing partitions. Therefore, the correct answer is A, LVM. Which of the following should be placed at the top of a bash script to ensure it can be executed? The correct answer is C. The shebang at the top of a bash script specifies the interpreter that should execute the script. A typical shebang for bash scripts is This ensures that the script runs using the bash shell. Why the other options are incorrect? A, bash. Simply writing bash at the top does not specify it as the interpreter. The script would need to be executed explicitly with bash script.sh. B. Exclamation mark execute. This is not a valid shebang or a command in bash. D. Add echo off. This is used in Windows batch scripting, not in bash. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A systems administrator has several different types of hard drives. The administrator is setting up a NAS that will allow end users to see all the drives within the NAS. Which of the following storage types should the administrator use? The correct answer is D. Just a bunch of disks. JBOD allows multiple hard drives of different types and sizes to be combined into a single storage pool. This setup enables end users to see and access all the drives within the NAS without requiring uniform disk configurations. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RAID Array RAID provides redundancy or performance benefits but typically requires disks of the same type and size, making it unsuitable for a NAS with mixed hard drives. B. SAS SAS is an interface for connecting storage devices, not a storage type. It does not manage how drives appear within the NAS. C. Solid State Drive SSDs are a type of storage media, not a storage configuration. A NAS can include both SSDs and HDDs, but using only SSDs is not necessary for this scenario. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Just a bunch of disks. Which of the following is the best action to perform before applying patches to one of the hosts in a high availability cluster? The correct answer is... D. Fail over all VMs. Before applying patches to a host in a high availability cluster, failing over all VMs to another host ensures minimal downtime and prevents disruption of services. This allows the maintenance to be performed safely while the workload remains available on the other cluster nodes. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Disable the heartbeat network. The heartbeat network monitors node health and facilitates failover. Disabling it could cause unintended failovers or service disruptions. B. Fallback cluster services. There is no common operation called fallback cluster services. Proper failover should be performed before applying patches. C. Set the cluster to active-active. If the cluster is already active-active, workloads are balanced, but this does not ensure that the specific host being patched is cleared of workloads. Failover is still necessary. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Fail over all VMs. A server administrator is deploying a new server that has two hard drives on which to install the OS. Which of the following RAID configurations should be used to provide redundancy for the OS? The correct answer is B. RAID 1. RAID 1, also known as mirroring, provides redundancy by duplicating data across two hard drives. If one drive fails, the other contains an identical copy, ensuring the OS remains operational. Why the other options are incorrect? A. RAID 0 RAID 0 offers no redundancy. If one drive fails, all data is lost. C. RAID 5 RAID 5 requires a minimum of three drives, making it unsuitable for a two-drive setup. D. RAID 6 
RAID 6 requires a minimum of 4 drives and is designed for high fault tolerance, not for a simple 2 drive configuration. Therefore, the correct answer is B, RAID 1. A systems administrator has been alerted to a zero-day vulnerability that is impacting a service enabled on a server OS. Which of the following would work best to limit an attacker from exploiting this vulnerability? The correct answer is B, closing open ports. Since it's a zero-day vulnerability, there is no patch available yet. The best immediate action is to close open ports related to the vulnerable service to prevent attackers from exploiting it. This reduces the attack surface until a fix is available. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Installing the latest patches. Zero-day vulnerabilities do not have immediate patches available. Installing patches is important, but will not help if a fix has not been released yet. C. Enabling antivirus protection. Antivirus helps detect and remove known malware, but does not directly protect against zero-day vulnerabilities in a running service. D. Enabling a NIDS. A NIDS can alert administrators to potential attacks, but does not actively prevent exploitation. Closing the ports is a more immediate and effective measure. Therefore, the correct answer is B, closing open ports. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.